Very good, thank. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a great pleasure to take a call on the Laws and Conveyances Amendment Bill. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, what is very clear is that for the sake of a robust democracy uh, and for the sake of the rule of law in a democratic country like ours, having a high standard, high standing professional bar is absolutely crucial. Having a body of advocates who can take cases, whether in the criminal jurisdiction, the civil or any other, and represent people fearlessly and without favour before uh, Her Majesty's judges and anybody else, if they so wish, uh, is absolutely crucial to ensuring that people's uh, statutory and common law rights are observed and respected and that justice is able to be administered properly and fearlessly. And so, sir, in that um, context and with the amount of law that we have, statute law and common law, having a profession, a legal profession that uh, is well led, that has men and women of standing and substance and intellectual capacity is very important. And having a means by which we recognise those who are excellent performers and top performers in the profession it not only gives confidence to those who are dependent on their advocacy and their services, but is also important, is absolutely crucial to the administration of good justice in the country. So, sir, this bill touches upon a very important aspect. And I agree with uh, my colleagues who have participated in the debate so far uh, that most members of the public would not know what the distinguishing features or factors are between a QC and any other member of the legal profession. When people if they get into trouble or they get into conflict or into, in, uh, in a dispute, they want someone who will represent them. They are not particularly fussed about the letters after their name, except, of course, when the invoice arrives. Then, of course, it does become very important. And I want to say, sir, that we have been very well served in this country, uh, not just by the legal profession at large, but by the senior advocates within them. And we have tended to recognise those senior and outstanding advocates, those who engage in, in excellent uh, uh, advocacy in the court, by conferring on them this title, once upon a time QC, or Q, uh, KC before it, and more recently SE, Senior Counsel. And I, in my experience here, I've, I uh, have come up against and I have dealt with many excellent uh, QCs, holders of that title. I think of people like Kit Tugel, who was outstanding in the employment field, now uh, on the bench. I think of uh, someone like Simon Lockhart, who, uh, to whom I juniored in my first ever uh, jury trial, um, who was most influential and educational. People like George Barton QC, who brought great intellect to the field. Uh, women like Krista MacDonald and Denise Bates. Uh, more recently, uh, Harry Wilkins, who cross-examined me at length on behalf of Air New Zealand once. Two days later, we settled the case on, fame, on terms favourable to the union. And, uh, and David Goddard, and I must say, uh, more recently, an outstanding QC in my, in my view, Nigel Hampton, who represented the uh, EPMU and the miners in the Pike River Royal Commission, now representing uh, one of the victims of the Christchurch earthquake and the collapse of the CTV building. A most compassionate uh, uh, humanitarian, in his advocacy and in his work and in his community work too. And then, of course, Paul East, who is a friend to all of us. But one of the QCs who I had come across, uh, who I appeared opposite, but who I expect to have uh, contact with very soon, is, of course, Julian Miles, and a, and a very good performer on the court, very good advocate. Um, and we'll see how he goes, of course, in proceedings in which I am involved, along with my colleague Trevor Mallard and, indeed, a well-known Cabinet Minister. Uh, but, sir, outstanding as all these representatives are, outstanding as all these councils are, one of the great virtues of the reforms that the last Labor government led was that they allowed the, those who uh, had won the respect of the profession and the right to have uh, the title conferred on them, the senior council title, were drawn from a much wider berth. And I think that was the good thing about it, because the truth is there are outstanding advocates who are not members of the so-called independent bar. And there are two points I make about that. One is that I, I know, because I've dealt with them in the employment field, members of the so-called independent bar
who are embedded, to use a military term, in Mr. Chairman, Andrew Little, embedded in the commercial uh, companies on whose behalf they are acting. They have a letterhead that suggests uh, a cham uh, chambers, independent chambers, but when you look closely at the address and when you meet them, they are actually at the commercial premises, the head office of the companies or company for whom they are acting. That's one side of the independent bar, but the other is law firms themselves uh, produce, uh, and certainly in their senior ranks, the senior partners of law firms, uh, some, frankly, uh, top performers. And I think of people like uh, Jack Hodder, a great constitutionalist, great public lawyer, uh, um, and a great partner of a law firm. And then people like uh, May Chen as well, who uh, similarly is a uh, partner of a law firm. Uh, but who you would be hard-pressed to describe as anything other than totally independent and fearless on whichever side of the fence or the argument that she is advocating. So, sir, there is simply no call, there is no logic to the argument that reinstating the rank of QC is about preserving the independence or the, the independence of the rank or uh, elevating the independent bar. It won't do that because the independent bar stands apart. We know who the top performers are and they can be recognised irrespective of where they are in the profession. So it'll be disappointing to take that backward step. And then, of course, the other rationale for the argument uh, for this change is that we want to restore, in name at least, the links to the Crown or to the monarch. Well, Mr Chairman, we've been moving gradually away from that in so many other respects. And much as we respect the role that the monarch plays in our constitution, uh, the truth is that we have been increasingly independent as a nation, a genuine uh, dominion, as we aspired to be at the beginning of last century, uh, but genuinely independent. And it is disappointing that by reinstating the title QC, we are taking that, uh, that backward step. It's, um, uh, and notwithstanding that part of it, sir, there is no question that there are many other ways in which uh, or that there are important ways in which we can recognise those who are at the top of the profession, those who are excellent advocates, without having to confer on them some uh, mythical link to the Crown. When I, all those, the names of those QCs, respectable men and women who I uh, adumbrated just now, they are people who I have met, none of whom were representing the Crown uh, when I worked with them or appeared opposite them or, or did whatever they were acting either in commercial or in public good capacities. And so they should. So good advocates should. And the real test of AQC, the real, the, that, that rank was conferred on those senior practitioners who had displayed an ability to argue uh, both sides of difficult arguments, who shown a willingness and an ability to take on what were often unpopular cases and put up with the public opprobrium that went with it. And they, because they could demonstrate uh, how well they could perform in the profession, they were conferred that title. Well, the only thing that the title gives now is really is a marketing advantage and, of course, the privilege that goes with being able to invoice at a much greater rate. And I know of QC, sir, who today invoices at the rate of $14,000 a day. That's what QC ship confers on someone, and it simply should not be that. Let's recognise the, the top performers in our profession, recognising how important that is, but we don't need to do what this bill provides for. It is a backward step. Let's embrace modernity. Let's move forward. And for the profession that has modernised itself so much, let's continue with what we have and recognise all top performers, not with an anachronistic title, but with a title that represents modern New Zealand. Sue Moroni. Well, thank you, Mr Chair. And it is a privilege to rise and speak.